Greetings and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the ongoing conquest of the Americas by the glorious Mexican Socialist Republic. The workers' revolution shall spread and the green dawn shall dawn across all of the Americas before uh, the game is over. Well, that's what we hope anyway. Um, certainly, that is our intention, and to make that happen, Gallardo here has decided that he has had enough of partying in Venezuela, and he is indeed going to become heavily involved in the next invasion, which shall be in the Republic of Peru. We have heard rumours that they have many fine archaeological sites, however the bourgeois elite treat them with no respect. No respect for the workers who did the constructions of these ancient and uh, historic monument, mon monuments, monuments like Machu Picchu, um, or Machu Picchu even, uh, and others that I have temporarily forgotten the name of. Also, a good reason for capturing Peru is that it has this lake here, which has the best name of a lake anywhere in the world. It is Lake Titicaca. <laughs> oh yes, Gallardo likes the idea of that. He wishes to film something on Lake Titicaca. Uh, he won't tell us what exactly, but um, you know, uh, whatever it is, uh, I'm sure it'll be great. And um, it'll either go out on the uh, Mexican Socialist Televisia Network, which of course is our propaganda channel for broadcasting to all of the Americas, uh, or possibly it will be made in our uh, Mexican film studios that are still being named at this time. Gallardo would is a leading contender let's face it um as is dino wood though so i mean that's like a that's like a it's going to be like a showdown between the two most powerful men in all of the msr gallardo magna leader of the armed forces and uh the uh, master of the first legion of mexican bravado and joy and of course dino enka himself the clone and ostensibly the most powerful man in the msr but is he really can he go up against gallardo himself and win well we shall have to find out uh, at some later point. For now, we have to plan our invasion of Peru because, honestly, it's going to be a nightmare. I mean, look at all of this jungle. I, and there's nothing here. There's almost nothing of value in this jungle that we actually want to take. So, But it's going to be a nightmare. Look, we've got all these rivers that we'll need to cross. Uh, Gallardo is, is stood. I think he's, like, here at the moment. Look, he's, he's coming down. His scouts are reporting. And he's like, what? Jungle? Just Jungle? What do I look like, Tarzan? I'm not going to fight through jungle. So um, he has decided that a better course of action might be a naval invasion on the port of Lima itself. A kind of behind enemy lines strike. And I think that's what we're going to do. I mean, both are going to be difficult, right? Obviously, a naval invasion into the capital city, if it's defended, is going to be just a nightmare to fight our way through. But it's got to be easier than fighting our way through all of this. I mean, look at this. And look, he's actually got... He's got like 10 units here defending this just bit of jungle. It's just a bit of jungle. I mean, what are you doing? Um, so, Gallardo, come down to the port, uh, which is the port region here. Bring your troops down to the port. We only need 10, I think, because I think that's still the maximum that we can ship. So let's take uh, this division and this division. Um... We'll actually pop them in their own army for the time being. And we will set you to defend here. To prevent, hopefully, <laughs> these guys, this 10 army unit from just like marching into the core of, of um, Colombia and other such places. Uh, even though it's just jungle. I mean, if we lose it, it's not the end. In fact, you know what? It might be better. It might be better to come here to defend the airfield. And then what we'll do is we'll just load that airfield down all of our planes. Yes, that is the plan. That is clearly the plan. Also, before we unpause it, I just want to start production of um, some new armoured division, for it is time, of course, to unleash the full fury of the Mexican tank, um, which the Boffins have been working on for a long time. Not these little light tanks. Oh, certainly not. Most assuredly not. We want heavy tanks. Heavy, 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 heavy tanks. Very heavy. That was a light tank. We want... Very heavy tanks. I think maybe like maybe two rows of heavy tanks. Like that. What's that? Uh combat width of sixteen. And then we'll we'll kind of we'll back this up with maybe some infantry. An infantry battalion. So we make this one of our full 40 width companies. We'll take this up to the full 40 width company. So we'll add some artillery as well. 37. Another tank. 
39 more. There we go, look at that. It's a perfect combat width of 40. This, of course, is the most important thing when designing armies, that you get nice round numbers in your combat width. I mean, that's what I'm told anyway. Uh, I'm not told it by anyone who knows what they're talking about, but I'm told it. Let's add some support artillery, uh, some engineers. Um, we'll leave the field hospital off. I'd quite like sort of mobile kind of uh, field hospitals in motorized divisions that I can just kind of distribute to the front line where and when they are needed. I think that's possibly a better way of doing it. Uh, this is going to cost us 130 of our 192 experience. This is like a monster division that we're that we're designing here. Um, but it's going to be just uh, completely awesome. Um, and it's going to be called... Tanko Maximo! Tanko Maximo! Um, clearly, that is like... I mean, it's not actually maximum tanks, to be fair, because it also has, you know, infantry and, and artillery. And indeed, we have room for another whole division to assign to it if we so chose. Um, but nonetheless, it is going to be Tanko Maximo. It has been... We received this design for an infantry brigade from Gallardo Magna on the back of a cocktail napkin from Venezuela by the post, which he sent back after getting just completely hammered, as he always does, on tequila, smoking a whole load of Cuban cigars and just having this really vivid dream of tanks rolling across the deserts of Mexico, uh, or possibly even the desert deserts of Texas. A vision of the future? We shall have to see. But we're going to save it anyway. Tanko Maximo, division designed, and we're going to train up. Uh, let's just create two of these to begin with, um, and I'm going to deploy them to this port here. I don't think they're going to be ready in time to wage war down here, but I mean, you never know, they might be. Um, and uh, if they're next to a port, we can always ship them to wherever they need to go thereafter. Excellent. Let's just make one more truck chicos um, to provide their uh, military police escorts. In fact, can we add the military police? to our truck chicos. Uh, MPs. We haven't completed research on the MPs yet. How, oh, it's nearly 29 days. That's not too far. It's not too far. Um, good. Excellent. Right, now we've done that. Let's unpause it uh, and we'll start planning the invasion, the mighty and glorious invasion of Peru. Uh, for starters, Martin, who doth budst uh, the mantis, we're going to give you a battle plan here, which is going to be something like this. Invade here, rather than stopping there. We basically want you to sweep down the mountains, because Martin Bustamante is like the master of the mountaineers. He has many a mountaineer uh, amongst his crew. So we want to bring this all the way down like that, I think, or maybe like... Yeah, like this. Using that river as cover on one side. We don't want to try and cross the river in the mountains as well. <laughs> that would just be that would just be insanity. Only a commander of Gallardo's sheer bravado would attempt such a crazy maneuver. And Martin is not that. I mean he he knows how to take a gamble, don't get me wrong. I mean he's he is renowned for his gambles. But he is also quite uh, sober and um, indeed uh, thoughtful and cunning and other such things. I mean, he does lead the the third legion of Mexican ultimate cunningness. So, you know, let's, let's not forget that. Um, the Boffins, or rather Frank, has finally delivered a cruiser, something bigger than a canoe. He has given us a cruising canoe, um, only uh, level one, which of course is a 1922 canoe. We're going to hand that straight over to the Boffins and get them working out how to improve that design and give us something, hopefully, a little bit better. We are low on manpower because of all the tanks that we're trying to equip um, and all the other new stuff. We, we might have to um, we might have to up our recruitment again in the future, but we will see what happens. We're missing equipment production of heavy tanks, obviously. Uh, let's drop infantry equipment down quite a bit here because I think it's probably more important that we get towed artillery, um, mechanized infantry, and indeed tanks. Tanks. Many, many tanks. All of the tanks, in fact. Well, a row of tanks. 1.1 uh, a week. We need 800. It's going to take us a little bit of time. But when they arrive, it's going to be amazing. And in the meantime, the Mexican Socialist Televisia 
uh, documentary channel can put in a nice documentary showing the production of our very first heavy tank. Oh, that's going to be great. People will love that. Um, they'll love it all over the place. Uh, available planes in reserves? Yeah, that's because I sent a whole bunch to reserves. I, I wish to send even more to reserves, if that's okay. There we go. I'll send all of those to reserves, and we'll deploy all of them uh, down here. I think possibly in, like, two separate wings. Others. I'm doing this in two separate wings to make it easy to, like, split them up and send them off to other airfields if it becomes necessary during the course of the war. Um which it may or may not. I'm also going to deploy one close air support wing, the smaller one, 100 close air support to basically this air region, which will hopefully help defending. Let's unpause it so they get into position. So yeah, because these are two separate air, <laughs> look at this, it's ridiculous. We've got like an air, air zone here, and then we've got an air zone just down here. So um, the close air support will come in here and help us defend against any possible Peruvian counterattacks whilst the rest of everybody goes and helps in the glorious assault on Lima and indeed the taking of the mountain ranges. Good. Fine. The German Reich is called Turkey in our enemy as our enemy in the Mexican Dominican War. It matters not. I mean what's Turkey gonna do? What is Turkey gonna do? All these people getting involved in our wars. It means nothing to us, truly. Truly nothing at all. Um Oh yeah, we need to plan the naval invasion. Gallardo, we need you to go from here and you're just going to invade Lima by boat. He's obviously going to come up with some kind of incredible plan in order to pull this off. I'm thinking uh, he's probably going to disguise his ships as uh, fishing boats. He's going to dress like all of his guys in Peruvian fishing gear. He's going to make them look like peasants and they're just going to kind of like sail up um, to, to the city of Lima in their like really badly disguised landing craft. I mean, we're talking about, like, massive ships, which are just gonna have, like, fishing nets, like, hanging off the sides, or, like, like, sort of, just, just, like, big plastic fish, like, you know, hanging off of, um, the, the masts and things like that. Lots of, uh, soldiers walking around with, like, I don't know, some kind of poncho or something. Do, do Peruvian fishermen wear ponchos? I don't know. Um, that's what that's what that's what Gallardo thinks. He's convinced that uh, Peruvian fishermen wear ponchos and big brimmed hats. Um, nobody's told him that that's like you know the typical dress of like Mexican cowboys. Um, so uh, you know he just assumes that that's what all people wear, uh, and that's what he's going to dress his men in as they approach the port of Lima. Hopefully it'll work. Anyway, let's unpause it and see. We need to actually assign these people as well. Division assignment to that. Go. Look, they're not even they're not, they haven't even arrived. They've been hanging out over here, um, messing about with the whatever this is. Oh, it's the border region that we assign to them. Defensive forces. We are going to need to leave some people on the border here. It would be foolish to think that uh, we could not have anybody on the border at all. We've got a troop who's just been built here. Some Mexicos. So let's bring them down by ship. Military police! Aha! At last we have learned the art of making our policemen into uh, military soldiers or vice versa and uh, using them to suppress the local population by more efficiently delivering tequila into their mouths and or um, Cuban cigars into other orifices. Or, or indeed mouths as well. I mean I probably shouldn't be shoving Cuban cigars into too many other orifices um, because that's likely to increase resistance, I would imagine, at least in most places. Um, good, fine. What should we set you boys on now? What shall the boffins research next? You know what? Let's do some industry. Let's do some con concentrated industry for factory output plus 20%. That's got to be good. For all concerned, more and better production for the People's Republic of uh, Mexican Socialism. That's a new name that we've been tossing around um, in uh, the back rooms, deciding if uh, maybe we should use it. But well, I don't think we should. The MSR. The MSR is the correct and true and only name uh, for the boys. Dino Enker questions the motives of the Republic of Peru. Is there any doubt that in the Republic of Peru, they, the bourgeois elite, make coats from puppies? Yes, I have heard this very thing in an echo from the future. Also, it is said that though they have some of the greatest ruins in all of the Americas, that they use them for filthy parties and also croquet games in which instead of a ball, 
they use a little hedgehog. Yes, it is true. A hedgehog, or possibly something native to the Americas like uh, uh, armadillo, perhaps. At any rate, we must conquer these people and ensure that no more armadillos are used for anything except for novelty drink service in dino anchors parties. That is all they should be used for. Uh, but at least through war, that can come about. At least that's what we hope. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's really uh, what they genuinely hope for or not. Uh, but if they do, then uh, hopefully it will come about in the near future. How's our invasion plan going to come along here? We have got uh, 40 days left, and uh, as far as our war justification against Peru goes, we have 20 days yet left. So. But then we'll have a little bit of time before we actually have to do it. And we want to give the boys as long as possible to prepare because, of course, we are in the process of producing and bringing in support equipment and towed artillery to beef up our uh, awesome division of Infanteria Bravados to their new and improved more guns style, um, which, uh, which everybody, I think, is pretty excited about. I'm certainly pretty excited about it. Uh, recruitment, we've got more Mech Chicos on the way, we've got more Truck Chicos on the way, and of course the Tanko Maximo divisions are also on the way. Uh, we don't have enough political power to do anything useful with at the moment. Um, so it's all going pretty well. Let's take a look at Canada and see how they are coming in their communist acceptance. 21%. Your, your time your time is limited, Mackenzie King, if you don't accept, if you do not accept the way of uh, Canadian communism, then there's going to be trouble for you. Armament effort 3 has been completed. Excellent. That's all of the armament efforts completed now. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do next. I want to hold off on capital ship until we've got one of the higher level capital ships to research. Uh, nuclear effort 1 times 50% reduced ahead of time penalty for nuclear technology. You know what, let's get that and uh, hopefully we can actually make use of it or something. When the time comes, we have free military factories. We have managed to gain a military factory, of course, from our effort there. Um, more towed artillery, more infantry equipment, more tanks. Uh, infantry equipment, we just perpetually have this astonishingly enormous need for, so um, we'll put it on that. Non-aggression request from the Republic of Spain. No, I don't think so. Um, what are you to us, Republic of Spain? You are nothing. You are just the old bourgeois who were kicked out of the Americas after you failed to, um, I don't know, uh, recognize the the value and uh, awesomeness that was the workers of this country at Slash Continent. Unpause it. Continue the time, continue the advance, and prepare for the mighty invasion of Peru. That is all that matters now. Conquer Peru and conquer the world. That's what we're being told. Um, should we check in our war? Look, we're like 87% in favor of the aggressors. I, I mean, who did, we're at war with Japan, Italy, the Dominican Republic, Menguku, the German Reich, Slovakia, Hungary, Finland, Colombia, Venezuela, Legionaria, Bulgaria, Ecuador, and Turkey. It's just, it's just mental. Um, the number of divisions that any of them actually have. Turkey has 20 to 92 divisions. Japan, 18 to 39. And that's it. Nobody else has any. I mean, what they're doing in the war, frankly, we don't know. Other than the ones, obviously, that we actually declared war on. 50,000 in casualties. How many casualties? We've taken 39,000 casualties throughout the course of the war. Which is... I mean, that sounds pretty bad, but we've killed 3,000 Dominicans. Um... Colombians, 81, th we defeated 81,000 Colombians, 69,000 Venezuelans, and 11,000 Ecuadorians. And we did all of those things. I just want to point out, entirely on our own, we're not part of some kind of big, we could of course call in Paraguay, but we're not part of some big faction um, that has loads of friends that sends in loads of assistance. Oh no, the Mexican Socialist Republic has done all of this on their own, just as they shall take. Peru on their own for our justification for conquering Lima has been finished. And take it, we shall, by glorious multi-channel invasion. Invasion by land, across mountains, and invasion by sea. Um, and in the meantime, we probably better bring these 
truck chicos down, the freshly trained deliverers of tequila, uh, along with their military police escorts to ensure the tequila is kept safe, um, because this region indeed must be garrisoned, in, as should Ecuador. We don't really want to leave Ecuador ungarrisoned. Um, if they went without their tequila rations, they could become very upset indeed. Um, we wouldn't want that, not whilst we're fighting down in Peru. Workers without tequila have a propensity for trashing the factories. And let's face it, who can blame them? I mean, we Mexican socialists came to these countries to liberate them from the bourgeois elite. And what more liberated form of state of being can there be than uh, that of being hammered upon tequila with Cuban cigars all around you and possibly other forms of luxury products uh, that we have picked up along the way as well. Certainly that's Gallardo's philosophy uh, and he has ensured that the truck chicos follow it without question. They are there to serve the people and serve them they shall, uh, as indeed shall our new improved artillery. Uh, improved artillery is good. Should we go straight on to improved, improved artillery? Improved artillery upgrade? Yeah, let's do that. Of course, that also means we have to switch over our production to improved artillery. The factory boys will get working on those. Of course, it'll take them a little while to spin up to speed, but we shall provide them extra tequila rations. And then our improved artillery will rain its shells down upon our enemies like tequila bombs from heaven. High explosive tequila bombs from heaven. Gallardo, of course, is desperate to get away and execute his awesome fisherman plan, um, but we really need to ensure that this border is protected. We've got like 10 units. We need, at the very least, to have a few of our new mech chicos and stuff in there, in the jungle. I mean, it's not the greatest duty in the world, to be fair. These poor guys are arriving and, um, you know, they're not going to go into any of the awesome military forces. Instead, they're going to be assigned to... Hold on, what have we got here? We've got a supply problem. There is a supply problem in northern South America. It, it doesn't matter. The mech chicos are not going to be here for very long. Look, let's get them assigned you boys i'm afraid your duties are not to be heroic members of either of the expeditionary parties but instead to trek into the deepest darkest rainforest and guard our border against significantly superior peruvian forces but you are mexican revolutionary guard in fact you are mech chicos armed with much tequila so i'm sure that you can hold out um for as long as you need to meanwhile the Peruvian attack is about to be commenced. A mighty invasion of the Mexican Socialist Republic into a well-defended, mountainous and jungle-ridden country um, for the purposes, of course, of liberating Machu Picchu from the uh, hedgehog slash armadillo um, croquet matches uh, and also having a massive party on uh, Lake Titicaca and, <laughs> and filming uh, some kind of uh, new production under the... Uh, under the auspices of Guiado here. But first, we must take the country, and I think we are ready to commence. What is it, the 26th of April? We have to justify war by the 25th of May. We can actually wait a little bit longer for some more like divisions and stuff to get fully equipped and, and prepped and things. Um, how are your, your guys' support equipment? We're still waiting on quite a bit of artillery, but we're getting there. 30 towed artillery waiting for here. 133 towed artillery. Let's give it a few more days. Just a few more days and then the invasion will commence. In the meantime, Gallardo is just kind of, he's giving final instructions to the men about how to complete their cunning disguises. But wait. Wait, wait, wait. Me the United States has declared war on Japan. What does this mean for the world? Japan? Isn't Japan already like... The Soviet Union annexes Tanutuvu. In a press release earlier today, Moscow announced the formal annexation of Tanutuvu. The Supreme Soviet agreed to a request from the Tuvan parliament for membership in the USSR. The small Tuvan People's Republic, which had only been officially recognized by the Soviet Union and Mongolia, will be organized as an autonomous. Obast. Oblast. Tanu what? Tanu what? What does this what does this matter to us? Look, let's pause it. So hold on. The US declared war on Japan, and Japan is just this bit. 
It's just this bit. Like, most of the island has fallen. Um, it looks like the United Kingdom is just soundly beating them. I think they've got a little bit at the back here as well. Uh, they've also got France in their islands, taking them. Um, I think they've still got a lot of these little islands here. But seriously, I mean, this isn't going to be... This isn't going to be the distraction that I had hoped it might be. Still, the Soviet Union is our great hope there. It is our great hope that that shall indeed be the final telling moment. The final telling conflict of this age. A conflict which shall be defined by the Soviet Union versus Europe and the MSR versus the United States. But first, we have a few more things that we have to take care of. For example, the capture of the Republic of Peru, um, which I think we are pretty much ready to drop the hammer on. Let's unpause it uh, and wait. Transmission from the United Kingdom. The United States has joined the Allies. And again, they have done it again. The United States joins the Allies. Transmission from the United States. Um, wow. Okay, so they are now officially members of the Allies. Hold on, what's happening here? Uh, the, the troops are on the march. The Americans are on the move. They have decided, now that they've joined the Allies, um, that it, they uh, can just stroll into MSR territory. What's going on? Oh, because they've joined the Allies, clearly they have decided um, that it's perfectly okay just because we happen to be at war with similar people. Even though we're not actually technically fighting anybody um, of the same sides, uh, that they can just stroll in here and uh, completely compromise our integrity. I guess they've come in to have tequila parties and other such things. Well, you know what? Let's just get the war started on Peru. I think that's clearly the right course of action. In fact, you know what? That is probably going to have to wait until next time. Next time, when we return, the war on Peru shall commence and then there will have to be a reckoning with these US forces strolling around nonchalantly in MSR territory. We'll have to see if there's some way we can revoke their access and possibly even snub the Allies once and for all for uh, what have the Allies ever done to us other than that one time when they aided us a little bit at sinking some unarmed convoy ships. I mean... I mean, it's just, that's just nuts. That's crazy right there. Um, and we shall have to find a solution to that craziness next time. But until then, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I have been Weird Wizard, and I will see you later.